Welcome back, welcome back. The Cousins are back once again. We are looking to talk about the Sacramento Kings today. Definitely a team that didn't do a ton in free agency. Obviously re-signed Trey Lyles and Alex Len. Nothing too crazy of a move. Obviously, I know Kings fans are very high on Trey Lyles, so that's a good signing. I think for the money, for two years, like you don't have him long-term, but you have him for the two years you're trying to make a push. And I think that's important. But I know you're very high on the Kings next season. What are your thoughts about just them? I am, and it's it's crazy the roller coaster I've been on. I mean, you remember the beginning of last year. You guys can check out some episodes from back then when I was absolutely shitting on De'Aaron Fox. I said he was like the worst point guard in the NBA. He really climbed his way up my list last year. I thought he was phenomenal. Uh, I like how player of the year. He was what? Clutch player of the year, new award. I was he took the words out of my mouth. I liked how poised he was in late game situations. I liked how he handled pressure. I liked the shot selection he had in late games. I think he matured a lot as a player. Um, him taking steps is a big part of the run that they went on last year. Also, we'll get into Malik Monk shortly, but that was another huge piece of the run they went on last year. And uh, before we get any further, shout out Rob Sabonis is a bitch. <laughs> Wanted me to yeah. throw that in there. Um, yeah, I'm not the biggest bonus guy, but I mean, I can't deny what he did for that team getting them there. Obviously, other guys took steps up, and that's why they were the three seed last year. But if I'm a Kings fan, I'm not an avid fan, but I watch, and I think they have two main things going for them. You Maybe your quote-unquote big trade, if you've watched any of our other episodes on our teams, I say every team gets through development. They draft a couple guys that are like the core pieces, and they make a big trade, like what the Cavs did, what the Thunder kind of did with SGA, like those kind of big moves that get you to that next level. Um, the Sixers with James Harden, the Raptors with Kawhi, like all those kind of things. Um, I think, one, they got that in Sabonis. Obviously, you traded Tyrese, but you were too – two-headed snake at the point guard position, and it didn't really work as well as you would have wanted. But you have that. Your fan base is unbelievable. Um, yeah, they got a fire home crowd. They got the fucking beam. I wish Slim was here to comment on the beam. Yeah, and then you I will to, not comment on the beam. <laughs> then you go to what you got last year. You're three seed. You play the defending champions in the first round. Should have honestly won that series if De'Aaron Fox didn't mm. get it reach i don't know i mean maybe you shouldn't have won it but you went seven games with the defending champs the warriors like if you're gonna get battle tested and you're gonna lose in the first round i'd rather it be to them than the team like memphis that's like been there but hasn't really done that that's so, why i think last year was so huge for them yeah and i think they're gonna be a top three seed in the west yeah like i'm relating this to the Cavs a lot but the Cavs played the Knicks in the first round and I thought they were the far better team and they got spanked. And like, I don't think that really helped us as much as I wanted it to. Yes. Hold your horses. Are you seriously enjoying this fire content without liking, commenting and subscribing? We're glad you're here at this or that NBA podcast. We want you to stick around. It's easiest to do that by liking, commenting, and subscribing. It's free. It takes one second and we really appreciate it. Thanks for your time. It's going to help, but playing. No, I didn't help. But playing a team in seven games versus the defending champs at like you have the higher seed, like I mean, you big got shots at home, there. big shots on the road, big stops on the road, crowd silencers, crowds going crazy. It's big for young guys to do that early. Yeah, especially if you're going to be in the playoffs, you want to play against the best team. And obviously, like the Kings weren't going to win the championship last year, but if you can go seven games in the first round versus the Warriors, like Steph Curry giving you fifty in the um, game seven, like those kind of things aren't total L's like you have to take that progression like look at the Sixers they've never even made it to the conference finals yet and the red it is a double-edged sword though because you can look at it one of two ways you can look at it the intelligent way how we just spoke about it or you can look at it as they got bounced in the first round which I think a lot of casuals would say yeah I'm not in that component I think it's a natural pro progression I think Every team that starts at the bottom, like if we're talking Pistons, Spurs, Hornets, like that progression takes seven to ten years to really be a title contender. Look at the Nuggets. Like they've drafted majority of the core guys, like Jamal Murray drafted, Jokic drafted. Th that progression didn't just happen over MPJ drafted. Yeah, they lost over and over in the playoffs. They signed guys, Bruce Brown, 
KCP, Aaron Gordon. Aaron like Gordon. those, you have your core guys. You make a couple additions. You had some playoff success and failures, and you finally get to that point. How how many years is Jokic been in the league? Eight, nine. So the Kings are at the point now where they run it back. Yeah, you they see do. what you got. It's you put all like your chips on the table, and then if next off season it's time to start looking at making changes. Let's let's touch on Malik Monk real quick because he had a phenomenal season. He had and, a fantastic round one mm -hmm. and he was creating for himself at like a top five percentile in the NBA for a stretch. Yeah. I mean, obviously he was unbelievable. And I also think it kind of goes back to what me and Slim were talking about in our Knicks video. If you're a Knicks fan, go check that out. But we were saying how the camaraderie between the guys is super important and having three guys that are going to get significant minutes in DiVincenzo, um, Hart and Brunson all play on the same college team. They're all very close. Like that connection goes a long way. Like, Fox and Monk. Like a team, they played together in college. A team doesn't get built overnight. It takes a year, two years, whatever. Like if you just watch Draymond Green, what he said today on uh, Pat Bev pod, he's saying like a team Pat Bev with Roan. Yeah, he doesn't get built overnight. Like this is a year long thing. And he felt like the Warriors were never a team last year. But they have okay. You have your star point guard and your second, third option being a guard that he played with in college, who's one of his good friends. Like that kind of stuff just elevates the guys, it boosts morale, it boosts like just team camaraderie. And I think if you look at every championship team, they're all close. The Nuggets, they were all hanging out post championship. Um, the Cavs went in 2016, that team was as tight as ever. And I think that's the kind of stuff you have to look at just beyond the basketball court. Like, yes, they were number one in offense, like historically good offense. But that is the kind of stuff that puts puts them at the third seed, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think they got a lot of people. Who's their coach right now, Mark Jackson? No. Um, nope. Nope. The, it's the other bald dude who's uh, – All right, I'm going to let you get it. Mike Woodson? Nope. Nope, close. Uh, he looks like both of those dudes, does he not? I want to say his name's Mike Brown, but I could be wrong. Mike Brown? Yes. It's Mike Brown. It's Mike Brown. Um, yeah, but he did a hell of a job, and I also think that's something. Wait, what was the first name I said? Mike something. I don't know. But I think that's kind of another thing that in the public eye kind of goes underrated. Like, obviously, the Kings fans know how much of a difference he made, but if – as for me and Finn, who don't watch the Kings 82 games a year, we probably watch 15. If you're looking at them and you look at the team that hasn't been in the playoffs for, I think it was 17 years, mm -hmm. and you come back your third seed and you make this huge jump, that doesn't just happen because guys got a little better. It's a combination of a lot of different things. Coaching, team team camaraderies. Culture. Culture, like – and as well as guys taking steps up, like De'Aaron had his best season. Sabonis had a great season. Logan also Mark just guys being on the same page. Yeah, and I also think what we see with a lot of young teams, there's the vets that are just non-existent. You have got vets playing significant minutes. Harrison Barnes, Trey Lyle. HB, bro. HB's – I mean, we did say we weren't going to mention his name on the pod. Yeah, because he is banned from vets. But He's banned from vets and he's banned from T.O.T., but he who will not be named is a phenomenal veteran, and he still has a lot of juice left in the tank unless it's a night that we need 10 points from him. Yeah, true. But I think, like, those kind of things are super, super important. And then, as bad as it is, like, I'm going to go to the Rockets real quick, like signing Dylan Brooks and Fred Van Fleet to a God knows how much money, like unbelievable amount, you need vets in your locker room. And if there are two, three-year deals, like, that's fine. You're not going to compete for a championship in two, three years. Like, they're just not. They're bottom of the league. Like, there's, you don't make that kind of jump. Like, as much as I would like to say the Cavs were competing for a championship last year, they weren't. Like, they just simply were not. So, I just think that what the Kings have done, you surrounded the young guys with vets. You've seen player development, which means your player development staff's actually doing something. You made a coaching change, and you're the three seed. You play the Warriors as tough as you possibly could. Your best player got hurt, but he still played through it, which is respect. But like he's all good now, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he probably just—I don't even know if he had to get surgery. But like those kind of things are super, super important if you're a team on the rise. 
Like, I think if you're just looking at it on like a young core landscape, like, I don't know if they're technically a young team anymore. They're a new team, I guess. But like, I would put them ahead of the Grizzlies in progression right now. I 100% would as well. Like, the Grizzlies last year looked so sorry versus the Lakers. I mean, obviously, they had a ton of injuries, but they looked very, very sorry. Like, the Kings, I legitimately thought had a solid chance going into that series to win. I mean, I was not very high on Golden State coming in, but the Kings, like, I didn't think they would push it to seven. I honestly probably thought they would win, lose in six. But, like, that kind of stuff is not something that should go unnoticed, and I think Kings fans should be appreciative of that and be hyped for next year. And they are the best fan base in the NBA. I'm going to ride with my guys, but. Okay. You got to be. That's fucking <laughs> crazy. Also, they could they could lose the uh, chain. That's kind of the Cavs thing. We started that. Yeah, I remember you had qualms with that last year. Yeah, it was just a, it was just an issue that was. It was something personal. It was a, a, a personal issue that you had with the team. Yeah, like you're gonna go light the beam. Sick. Love yeah, it. Yeah, that's cool. Maybe you guys should light the beam. No, we're not copycats. Watch this. Yeah, come out to bite me in the ass. We're gonna start. So here, so I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna brainstorm a second here okay. to wrap up this beautiful episode. What is the Nets? beam next year what's going to be our thing because i'm going to shoot this over uh in an email to the team over the next yeah uh, in an email to the team and then hopefully we'll be able to get this rolling i think maybe here's what we do it's a flare gun type of thing every dub there's a fat flare that goes off and it, it comes with like black and white fireworks and that's colors bleed black and white and the shield also gets projected I mean, yeah, it'd be pretty cool. The Kings definitely started something. Like teams are gonna start doing stuff like that. We gotta do. We gotta just project the shield as the bat signal. That's what it is. <laughs> we get just like every time we win, it, you just look up, uh, like in Midtown or Brooklyn, shield. Yeah, no, that's elite. But I mean, I kind of want to get back to the Kings. If you're just making your conference predictions for next year, mm-hmm. just seeding expectations for a team how far do they go in the playoffs do they not even make the playoffs where do you put the kings I'll they lose out. in this they lose in the second round or the conference finals and they're a three seed okay so similar seeding to last season but get a step further i think i'm gonna go around the same thing i'm trying to think of teams i think the grizzlies won't be a top three seed because they're missing jaw for a quarter of the year i don't think they're gonna be a top three seed i think the grizzlies Um, are almost like a little bit dead no um i think they'll be able to hold. talk about that later yeah we'll talk about the grizzlies soon enough but i'm gonna say i like the three seed again i think that's a fair spot i don't know who's gonna get to the two but i could see the kings being like really we did it last night the two seeds are two Nuggets are one. I would put the Kings are two. Nuggets are one, baby. Um, Yeah, but I think top three seed is one successful regular season, barring injury. You don't want guys to get hurt, but if you get to that top three seed, and I do like the second or conference finals exit. I don't know. I think they could beat anyone in the West, but uh, actually, I was going to say about the Nuggets, but I could see them winning. I don't know. They don't match up well against the Nuggets. I know it's just the oh my god, bet the over every time in that series. But yeah, that'd be a big time over farm series for you. <laughs> I mean, the total would just go so unbelievably high. But uh, no, I think if I'm a Kings fan, I would be. I wouldn't be wishing for a. Cha- I mean, I would be wishing, but like I wouldn't expect a championship. I think if you can get final to exit is a huge win. Absolutely, and then that's when you can go and you can really see. Okay, what were we missing in these last two playoff runs? That's who we need to target. We need to sign this guy. We need to sign that guy. And then that's what propels you up. And I think that's a great split plot to be in, to be honest. Like, you can't complain about that. Um, it's, a, think, it's a put your chips on the table and let's see what we got. Like, how many more years does Golden State le- have left? Two would be really yeah, good. Yeah, two. three. Lakers, how many years is LeBron going to play? Two? Two. Three. Like, those are West two. West is about to get blown wide open. That's two powerhouses that are coming down. Obviously, you have teams like the Thunder and the Pelicans probably going to make a rise, but you're going to be more experienced than them. You're going to have the experience. Like you can do stuff. Like you will be in a position. We're doing it. We're doing what we did last night with the Pels, where you're talking me into it. I mean, the Kings are going to have a phenomenal year. Yeah, I definitely do too. Like you're going to be able to control your own destiny. Is my kind of thing. And I think just enjoy the season. This is what my message this whole off season. Like, yes, you're not always like 
every video we're not going to make that team. News flash, Matt's lesson to the NBA guys. Just enjoy the season, guys. Yeah, just enjoy it, dude. I was like, I knew we weren't going to win, but I had a great time. I had more fun watching Cavs basketball than I did a lot of other things just in normal life. So I had a great season. But we will catch you guys next time. If you want to check out any of our other videos, we're going through every single team, their expectations for next season, and we'll be making another video on the Kings shortly if there's any major moves, shakeups, anything like that. But like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.